Hey lads, uh, this is how I went about painting my Goblin Warrior from Goblin Town by Games Workshop for Strategy Battle Game. Down, down, down in Goblin Town. I'm showing you the scheme I ended up with after painting 13 of these bad boys. The thing to remember is with the painting scheme is that it's evolving. So even the one I'm showing you right now, it might be tweaked in the future. Though this is the last one I have right now. When I was bargain hunting in Taipei, I found a shop with several boxes of these models. And then at the time, someone who shout me down, <coughs> um, was thinking about playing SVG and he loves everything goblins. Though I didn't want to hoard army as I have 350 unpainted miniatures and I didn't want to add 150 to that total. But I wanted to get him into the game and love the game as much as I do. So when the shop assistant showed me several boxes of loose models, I only bought enough for him to play battle companies and nothing else. Suffice to say though, he went to the shop the next day and bought all the boxes. And then he emptied Games Workshop of hit their stock as well. <laughs> so they have just been sat at the bottom of my pile, but I want to try and get better at painting. And I feel skin is one of the hardest things to paint. So I thought I would try one and behold, they're enjoyable to paint. In the first two weeks of our lockdown, I, paint, I have painted all but one of them. I need to remember to push myself with each miniature, even though they're easy to batch paint and have all the same, I don't want to get into old routines, which will make me lazy and won't make me improve as a painter. On the screen now, you can see the first model I painted from this lot. I don't think he turned out that bad, but the transitions between layers are where I need to improve. So I got to work on doing that. With each model, I tried to improve on the last one and work on my midtowns and get the skin color to mo look more like goblins from the movers. This one is one of my favorite out of the bunch, but because I was trying something new with each one, I forgot exactly how I painted him. And well, my wet palette had too many variants of different colors for me to decipher it. So this will be my painter's log, so even if, when I buy more of them, I will know how to carry this project on. If you like the content, please give us a like as it does give me a warm fuzzy feeling inside. Let's get into it. Like most of my models, I started with a prime of Gracia. Though, because the can was running low, it came out a little bumpy. But I don't entirely mind this, as it gives the skin some texture. My thought process with the skin base colours was that it needed to be faster paint and easy. With this in mind, I used contrast paints, Gullum and Flesh and Magos Purple. I tried to follow the colour scheme from Games Workshop's website, but I couldn't achieve this same effect. Where the skin would be in direct contact with the sky, I use more Gulliman's flesh. And either the shadows or the rotten parts of the skin, I used I use Magos purple. I used contrast medium to make sure the colours were blending together. While I'm waiting for the contrast paints to dry, I'm going to block out the other parts of the model. First is the leather, which is on his loincloth and straps around his wrist and ankle. For his bag, I wanted to add some contrast to the model, so I'm using English uniform. 
hopefully this will make his bag stand out a little more from the rest of him. I use some pans of flesh for his hair as I want his hair to look more dirty and grimy as he hasn't even seen the light of day. Now he is dry, I will block out the primary skin using Rackard flesh. I want to keep the contrast in the crevices and use Rackard Flesh to give volumetric highlights to the muscle groups. This is actually one of the funnest parts of the miniature and one where I spent most of my time improving, trying to give each muscle group its, its actual shape highlights. Now that's done, I want to go brighter and Games Workshop website says to use Pallid Witch Fledge. But I don't have any, so I'm going to try and make my own. I have to spend some time learning more colour theory as I'm a little bit weak in that area. I just buy paints that people use. And now I have nearly 10 different greys, whereas two would have been enough. Seeing as my base layer is Rackard Flesh, I will try and mix it from using from this using some Yulthan Grey and basic skin tone. I would advise you just to play and see what you think is right as I'm clueless. more you ultra in grey than anything else for the highest light points as I want it to be close to pure white without actually using any white to try and make the contrast pop. Here's the fun part, I get to play with my new toy! I want to blend the layers so I'm spraying a diluted Gilliman's flesh from the top and Magos purple from the shadow, for the shadows. This hopefully lets me achieve the effect that I want. No, lack of skill still holds me back here. But it's, get, it's fun to play with a new toy.
Here are the details which I feel are not as important, so I'm quickly going to go over them to save time. The leather will be is highlighted with Gawthorn Brown and some Wraithbone and washed using a diluted Wildwood. The bag is highlighted with a mixture of basic flesh tone and English uniform and washed with sepia. The eyes, teeth and toenails are all Wraithbone. The sword is bolt gun metal and the hilt is Wraithbone. Both are washed with Agrat's Earthshade. After it is dry, it's just a quick highlight with the same colours to make the sharpest edges stand out. The last touch is to make this, the boils stand out a little bit more. I use Magos Purple to give them a saw look. And I use some Flesh Terrors to make them seal like they're going to pop. Then I highlight them with a mixture of pink and white to make them look like they are filled with water. And whoops, I forgot to highlight the hair with one of my many different grades. To give the skin a sickly look, I'm going over parts with Nurgle Green. I want to make sure the impression of him being sick is taken to the extreme. Now for the final part, I want to add contrast between certain areas. So I'm panel lining, then cleaning up the excess with some enamel thinner. Before I show you the final product, I will make another video on the bases, so make sure you are subscribed for that. And would you do anything different? Let me know down in the comments below. Without further ado, here is the final product. Thanks for watching lads, enjoy!